a man from Beckville, ZZ Zamamasondo, and there he is. He touches the ball, he dribbles, and it's an inside out. Oh, my daughter, Ulenzani Pona, Albu, one man over a cut to lay brown, La Poa Shao Jigetjo, Indu Twanes, our Pupanzi. Well, there he is, click, click, bang, clicking and banging. Oh, he undoes his shoelaces. Babam Tetra, Babam Tetra, Babam Tetra, size 11, recently shrunk to size 10. <laughs> So that's so so I'll have a but Ben, we want to show them how this game is played. Who is the man of the match? Kamabilia. Oh, okay, thank you. I'm saying, why did you ask? What did he do? So what, under the bridge, we, we're ready to, to start the league. We'll end get some instructions. And we'll see if they're listening in. <laughs> He's just trying, obviously, to make sure he gets the proper instructions as well. Silly He's shaking head. Not in his head there. <laughs> Oh, what a weekend, what a weekend. Let me tell you something. If uh, the fixtures that we witnessed this past weekend are anything to go by, this is going to be a sensational season. It was hot on and off the pitch. Very good evening and welcome to Extra Time. It's a brand new season, brand new studio, brand new Extra Time. Well, we're going to be simplifying Itiski with yours truly, Simply Carol. Lalalan, it is Women's Month. We're celebrating the fairer sex, and that's why we've got some beautiful color here in the studio as we get into the show and look back at all of the highs and uh, some of the controversial moments. But, you know, yeah, just looking back at the weekend's action in the Absa Premiership. Welcome to it. Talk to us. We're on hashtag SSDSKI. You can send me a tweet personally at Simply Carol Aid. But you are a very important part of the show, so we want to hear what it is that you have to say about the action that we saw this weekend. Let's get straight into it because there is so much to talk about. Amanda, Women's Month, happy Women's Month. Show sure, good to have you guys in the Extra Time studio. Thank you so much, Carol. Mm -hmm. Feels good to be here. Of course, Women's Month, and what a way to start the show. And welcome to you too, the Extra Time. Yeah, well, <laughs> and welcome to you too as well, Shorty. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> nah, I mean, it's, it was an exciting weekend, wasn't yeah. it? If you look at um, the opening fixtures, 15 goals all in all, and by comparison, not so bad. I think uh, it, it, there are signs which we're going to be having a really good season. Yeah, there are really signs because if you look at it, the players haven't played for so long, so everybody's just excited to try out the new tricks, new stuff that they've been learning or, you know, perfecting in the, in, in the pre-season. So I am excited to see what it's gonna, how it's going to unfold with each and every game. New signings yeah. and all of it. It's just, you know, exciting. It's very exciting, isn't it? And I know that one thing that so many of you were talking about, particularly last season, is the goals. We want to see more and more goals. 15 this past weekend. Do you think that um, it's in the making, Ugoti? You know, that tally is just going to continue to be added and that the excitement is going to only peak as the season opens up. I mean, you're looking at these results. Obviously, the biggest one um, and the most keenly anticipated encounter was the defending champions, Masanda One and Kaiser Chiefs. Sold out, very, very exciting, but a share of the spoils there. Look at Bitvest Vits. And uh, it seems as if, as in, they mean business this season, Amanda. No, absolutely. Something has to give for Vits. I think you look at last season's performance and you think that uh, with the signings also, they've been quite active in the transfer for markets, they really want to make an impression this season. So you have uh, a 3-0 uh, win, home ground, and uh, I think they, they maximize on their home ground advantage. But you also have a look at the likes of Black Leopards. Um, they're back in, in, into the PSL uh, top flight football with a massive, massive win. I mean, also Highlands Park, the kind of performance that yeah. they gave, drawing with Orlando Pirates, mm -hmm. who I think were contenders for the title last season, yep. I think that really shows that teams are not here to play, but to really gun out for, for the top honours. Yeah, that's what I wanted to talk about, is the returnees to top flight football. Mm -hmm. Highlands Park and, of course, Black Leopards. I mean, what a great start for Lidot Dadova. I mean, uh, really anticipated return. Um, so many individuals, so many fans were excited. Guti, they're back in top flight football, and they did not disappoint at all. They didn't disappoint, Carol, because you can just tell that they've been ready for it. I mean, it was a build-up from the playoffs yep. to seeing them playing and, and, and you can just tell that the players 
were just excited about getting on that field, how they lined up, how they were uh, maximizing the opportunities. They scored one goal, but I think they should have capitalized with a lot of goals. But this is a good sign for them to say they are confident coming back to top flight football and they are already displaying quality football. Yeah, their 10th season in the Premier Soccer League, Karabo Tep is scoring his first top flight goal for Black Leopards. This, this is what they wanted. They wanted to um, start with the victory. It was at home, though, albeit at the Pitomukaba Stadium. It was a derby as well. No, absolutely. And I think, you know, considering um, all a bit of the drama off, off the pitch yeah. in terms of trying to secure home ground where they've been playing uh, in the NFD, um, coming out first game of the season and performing in that kind of fashion, it surely does say that future derbies of the Limpopo derby will be much, much better. Whether the fans are at home or not, they are out here to make sure that they don't go back um, into the NFD. But I think massive, massive performance for them. Uh, but uh, I think the display on its own is really great. Yeah. about the yo-yoing. You see yeah. teams coming into top flights. Are they immediately going to be relegated? Uh, but if you look at how that these two, Highlands Park as well as Black Leopards, have started their campaign, they've said, listen, they mean business. They've made some key signings as well. Um, added in the experience which you need for top flight football. Yeah, they did that. And you can tell now it's two different teams yeah. because Black Leopards, with the way they played, they were more confident to say they're displaying already, they're stamping their authority. And you look at um, Highlands Park, you know, I mean, they had a plan. We are going to defend take the pressure, but we're also going to show from onset that we're a team that is disciplined because often you find teams that come and gain a, a, a promotion to the PSL, they get too excited when they get up there, then they don't play good football and you can't really tell if they have structure or not, you know. So with uh, Highlands Park, you can tell that they have a plan. They're taking it one game at a time. Yeah. And I think they really showed confidence again playing against um, a well-oiled machine team like Orlando Pirates. Yeah, look, a gift chance in terms of what happened here, but they will take it. They will take that one point. Yeah, they forced that error, you know, because it means they were pressing up high to say we don't want them to build up from the back, and they did exactly that. And that's what you want to see a, a team uh, pressing such a big team as Orlando Pirates. And, yeah, it's the confidence that you talk about where they have a structure and they stick to the plan to say this is how we want to play. And, unfortunately, you know, um, it was hello, welcome to the PSL yeah. with that penalty. Mm. You know, red for danger. I, I think as Mnyamang Nkani is feeling that, you know, this is how we do it. You know, we bring the game to you. And it's quite interesting because here you can tell that both teams went on the field to say we want to showcase and make our fans proud because this was a full Orlando stadium. You know. Ah, and then you look at uh, Justin Strong, his fifth goal for the Buccaneers in his 20th league game for the club. And in fact uh, the Buccaneers have never lost a match in which Ushonga has scored. Yeah, well, I think he's the lucky charm. Um, but it was very surprising to see him start off the bench. Yeah. Uh, but I guess as one person who's reliable was the one to step up and really convert the penalty. Ah, that's right. All right. So a share of the spoils there in all three encounters so far uh, between the Buccaneers and the Lions of the North have ended in draws. But let's talk about the big moments in that game. And uh, it's, a, it's about... I think it was a flashback, particularly for Amapagania, of the issues that they've had in the past when it comes to their goalkeeping department and some of the errors that we'll remember. And, um, you know, when you saw what transpired on the pitch at the Orlando Stadium with Wayne Sandilands, one had to feel for him. I mean, he was, he got the uh, Golden Glove uh, accolade for last season. He was very outstanding in terms of the games in which he started. And that's why he was the top goalkeeper then. And he wanted to continue that, but just an unfortunate moment for him no goalkeeper gets on the field and say i want to be you know to make such a yeah. blunder you know because it just tells you that he had the confidence to say even his defender had the confidence to say i can give it to my goalkeeper we can go out the other way you know just wrong choice of foot you know to kick the ball with and i think also the pressure that was coming to him was a lot because that's what you want to see with strikers he made sure that he takes him to his weak side and it was difficult for him but you know it, it is for him to learn um and say there's things I cannot do, you know. And also the confidence with him is how does he step out of that 
emotional intelligence mm. comes into play because you're a top flight you cannot put your head down and say this mistake happened and then I'm out it's for him to step up and say the certain things I have to grow from because we know he's had it bad you know he's got a mm. couple of moments he's had last season and I think he wants to move from that yeah and clearly the message from the Buccaneers is the fact that he listen he is uh, one of the standout um, individuals in terms of being between the sticks so we want to take it back I know it might hurt for some of the Buccaneers that are watching <laughs> why it was that so many of you really just uh, were up in arms when that mistake transpired. It's because of this history of some of the goalkeeping errors that uh, you've witnessed. Here's an interesting scenario. And a most bizarre goal to start the game. Talk about pressure. Talk about putting your best foot forward. Hango. With a great head again and a great save with Lando. Has that come up with a lot? It has! Lando! But it's been coming. Avoda has been less than convincing. And he's been found out again. Dominguez. Monari has a shot. Oh, and it's spilled by Avoda! It's finished up! And Avono! 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 What was that? It wasn't even hit that hard. But Avono is having a nightmare. They were all in nightmare. So now you remember why, why it was, Guti. You know, the Buccaneers, but I'm man. Sing a buye, Lige Lana. Goalkeep, the goalkeeping department, um, it's always been a, a, a bit of a sensitive issue as it was when it comes to the Buccaneers. But uh, um, you said it, there were moments for Wayne Sanderlands last season uh, where things didn't quite go his way. But on the whole, he had a fantastic season and that's why he was the standout goalkeeper. And they decided to start Ngaye. You know that they've added reinforcements as well in that department. Yeah, a very touchy subject, I yeah. think, for Mapaga Paga. But um, you can certainly see what the reinforcements that they've made. Um, and unfortunately, there is no goalkeeper that doesn't make mistakes. We yeah. also watched and witnessed uh, during the World Cup. And um, I think it's one of those things where it's just a technical issue, maybe yeah. um, miscommunication. Could because be... you understood what the idea was. The idea was, was there, yeah. yeah, of course. We, I think in terms of development, maybe yeah. coach, you'd want to involve your goalkeepers in, in the build-up. Yeah, time. in the build-up, yeah, yeah. maybe even with the small-sided game so that they're comfortable with the ball, so that it doesn't come as a shock when they, are, when they find themselves in a situation like that. So goalkeepers are sort of like your sweepers. Yeah. They are the outlet if it is that it's congested and you need to change or switch um, the ball to the other side. So I think it's just a learning uh, curve, but I think for a top team like Orlando Pirates, they certainly should look into it so that it doesn't happen quite often. But also for Wayne Sanderlands, you need yeah. to wake up from it and yeah. just try and embrace what is happening and try to improve. I wish he did. Um, and we saw the wonderful support from the coach, uh, yeah. from uh, the players as a whole. Happy Jailer, when they went into that halftime break, that was fantastic to see. And it just helped to, you know, keep his head up. And, of course, he stayed in that encounter. So props to you. And, of course, can only get better and better. Now, the pressure that was oncoming. He, I mean, he, he yeah. knew what it is that he had to do. But that pressure from Highlands Park. Yeah, he had that pressure because yeah. the striker was coming close. Yeah and giving him only one option. I think the biggest mistake that he did there before choosing the wrong foot was he was standing right almost underneath his goalpost. If he was maybe a meter or two meters away from there, he was going to be able to get the first touch and then play it out on the other side. And yeah. it happens, you know, because even that pass was a pass not too close to goals because the first thing you, say, you tell a defender don't pass straight to the goals because you want to avoid that and he passed it because he's confident that his goalkeeper is going to get the ball and get it out you know so he, it's that like Amanda says in small sided games you want the goalkeepers to get the ball put it down let's play mm. they are alert they are awake they are part of the game mm. took nothing away from the fantastic performance uh, of the Buccaneers I think uh, plenty in store for them this season I mean you take a look at the stats at the end of it all uh, Highlands Park very happy with the share of the spoils looking at the fact that the entire encounter Amanda I mean the glaring stat there is that no shots on target for them yeah, and I mean, we, when you watch the game, though, yeah. you think that, okay, goal attempts from Orlando Pirates, 15, mm. um, but uh, shots on target, 8, but then the scoreline says a different thing. So I think for them, yes, they were well organized, 
um, but they were facing a better organized team in Orlando Pirates who I think had a phenomenal season in terms of being defensive, yeah. organizing their defense first, but very um, in the offensive they were very, very good. So I think it was difficult to break the lines of Orlando Pirates because they were much, much better organized. But I think true reflection of the game, they were just very aggressive. They imposed themselves and I think that was something um, they could take out from the game. Yeah, well, uh, the take out for the game, we're going to hear from uh, ODG Owen Dagama after that encounter. He was well aware of the stats, but he said, look, at the end of the day, they did what it is that they needed to do, and he was happy with the share of the spoils. Coach, the stats will say to you, you had zero shots on target. Yes, I think um, the most important thing for us was to try and, 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 and contain them. And, and, and try and get them on the break because of the quality that they have. Um, unfortunately, um, it, it, you know, things don't go according to plan. But uh, we did create chances. We got a lot into their box, um, which was very, very important. Uh, we, we, we got set pieces, we got corner kicks, which we created. Uh, but um, it, it's something that, uh, you know, all these stats that you guys come up with are things that help us. We go back to the drawing board, we look at it, and, we, and then we start saying, how can we improve? But we, we are at a level, and we believe we want to go to another level, slowly but surely, and uh, we've still got a long way to learn, but we're very humbled to have, um, have, have, have played uh, uh, against the Orlando Pirates in this wonderful match. Mm, yeah, we love, we love those comments. So a true reflection of what actually transpired and they're very happy to have had, you know, a share of the spoils there. You're talking about the number of opportunities that the Buccaneers had, Lalela Nanit, finishing coach that has been brought on board. What do you think about that? Uh, Stefan Adam from uh, League uh, uh, side Lille. So clearly those opportunities now, as the season progresses, we're going to start seeing them being converted. It is important. I think we need to applaud that because yeah. I think goalkeepers are a specialized position. There's a goalkeeper coach. And I think because we have a problem in scoring, you know, yeah. and it's something that cannot be overlooked. You need to go down to detail to say, be aware of the goals. Where you, I think Amanda would even tell you better because she was a striker, you know, but I think um, it, it helps. And we will certainly see it because we know that Orlando Pirates is a team that is a reformed team. It, it is bringing flair. It is bringing quality. And the signees that they've brought on, those are players that are able yeah. to score. You know? So I think with that coach being there, it will really work out for them. Mm. All right. Sheikh Rampet is saying, well, to be fair, Highlands Park getting a point away to Orlando Pirates is a really good point. Agreed. And uh, that's what they said as well. Um, um, a lot of you saying, uh, you know, just looking at um, uh, what it is that we've seen so far, loving the show. Hashtag Disky Simplified. That's what we're doing here tonight, right? <laughs> that's what we're going to continue to do on Extra Time. You can keep talking to us on hashtag SSDisky, hashtag Disky Simplified as well. There was an important question that was asked, <laughs> and uh, we just had to throw it in there as one of the, the part of the highlights from the weekend. Who chooses the man of the match? It's a question that not just, you know, you know what is the criteria as well for getting mm -hmm. that man of the match? Um, it's a question that has been asked by plenty of you as well from time to time when there have been differing views as to whom you thought really stood out in an encounter. Amanda. Yeah, well, this is also a very sensitive uh, subject yeah. because, yes, we've, we've witnessed it in, in the past seasons where uh, people question um, yeah. the criteria and how it's done. Then I guess uh, we all need to relook at it and see how it is that we can get involved and, and probably reflect the true men of the match uh, in their performance. But I honestly think that with regards to Coach Pizzo's uh, remarks, yes, maybe he might have felt a different kind of way, but Kama Billet has been getting the men of the match awards at sundowns and uh, it hasn't been that much of an issue. But maybe on the day he felt that um, he didn't perform otherwise. Yeah. But in all honesty, we need to look at the overall look of the person or the individual that is nominated, not necessarily just the contributions as into goals or whatsoever. I yeah, but, but, but the, con the conversation as well in studio, because the man of the match is uh, chosen by the commentators mm -hmm. who are at the venue, have got that aerial view of the entire game. And yeah. um, usually it's, it's four individuals that are there in that commentary booth. And um, there's always a discussion. They sometimes, can't yeah, yeah. Sometimes there'll be a tie and uh, they'll even rope uh, the analysts that are in the studio in to get their opinions. And I mean, you were working on that, uh, on that matchup and there were a few names that stood out. Um, uh, Ujangasi was 
one of those. Yes, Lila Kay. Yeah, Lila yeah, Kay was Lyla another. Um, and definitely Kama Billiard was, was definitely uh, an individual that was highlighted as one who made a difference. Yeah, so it's not like Sinali's two, but yeah. I think it's okay. That is one person who deserves it, but it's an overall group effort to sort of say, this is a deserving player. And I think on the day, even now, I can still stand in saying that Kama Billiard was the one who was more of a a live wire in the yeah. game for, for Kaiser Chiefs. All right. Um, and, and Shorty as well. I mean, there's a criteria there as well for man of the match performances. You'll find it on the FIFA website, you know. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll discuss it a little bit later on as well. But also an individual who's had um, a clean game. So no yellow cards, you know, uh, not a lot of fouls. That, that comes into play as well. Yeah. You know, I think there's a lot that goes into it, you know, and sometimes when you're just looking with a naked eye, you don't, you miss a lot of opportunities there because you're looking at your team, you're looking at other players, you're looking at a lot of things there. So um, I always say is a player that has an impact and sometimes that player that has an impact might not, you know, be the worthy candidate at that particular time, you know, and I, and I just think, like Amanda said, you know, it doesn't matter. For me, it doesn't matter. What matters is that there's a player that is rewarded for being on the field and giving his heart out on the field, you know. And if there's 10 players on the field that are doing well, will you pick all 10 of them? You know, he might have been the lucky player at that time when everybody, you know, sat down and said, let's go with him, you know, after discussions. It's never, like Amanda said, it's not like we pick out and say, this player, there's discussions in attack, in defense, it, does he have an impact yeah. in which stage of the game? All of that goes into, yeah. into and, play. And a lot of your comments as well come into play because so many of you were reflecting on that game and said, these are the individuals that stood out for us. And that's why we always say, hashtag SSDSKI, you're part of the conversation and important. Okay, ladies, um, you're going to be back a little bit later on. See, so it's a bit of a substitution right <laughs> here in the studio, but the discussions continue on extra time. Let's continue to simplify it, Diski. Hashtag Diski Simplified. There's been a big call this season for all of you to bring your voice to the stadiums. And many of you already this weekend have answered that call.